Mitchell Gant is a veteran American pilot who becomes involved in a top-secret mission to steal a high-tech Russian fighter plane known as Firefox. Covertly entering the Soviet Union, Gant receives help from dissidents within the country, most notably a group of scientists who have been working on the plane. As Gant reaches his goal of heisting the aircraft, enemy pilots are quick to follow, leading to a sequence of soaring dogfights as he attempts to elude Soviet jets. Right, hey up, it's Steve from the old Yorkshire Geek. Me hair's doing mad things again, I've just noticed. Um, welcome to Magnificent Mondays, episode 37. I have to check, because I can never remember. This week we're doing Firefox, as you saw from that amazing synopsis. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, the Clint Eastwood film, where he steals a Soviet fighter plane. It's great stuff. Right, so we're doing that. But before we start, don't forget, like and subscribe, share the videos, drop a comment, hit the notification bell if you subscribed already. Uh, right, we're live on YouTube, let me check, we're live on YouTube, yes we are, we are live on YouTube. And Windgrace is here, careful Fox, fire is hot, he says. <laughs> uh, it's not about a... Um, uh, a web browser either, it's about an aeroplane. Uh, we're live on YouTube, we're live on Rumble, thank goodness this time, the last few... Last couple of times, Rumble hasn't been working for me. But it's working today. We're going on that. Well, it would seem to be. Uh, and we're live on Twitch. There we go. Right. So, and also, yes, uh, congrats on the 700. We've reached 700 subscribers on YouTube. Yay! Which is amazing. Next stop, a 1,000. <laughs> it's miles off. But we'll see. I never thought I'd get this far. I never thought I'd reach 500. I thought I'd reach my ceiling. But uh, onwards and upwards, as they say. As they say. Right. So, Firefox. Firefox. What do we know about this? Right. Uh, I saw this at the cinema when I was... How old will I have been? 15-ish. Um, it was a double A certificate. I remember when we used to have what were called a double A certificate. You had to be 14 or older to get in to see it. We don't have them anymore. They changed the they changed the um the ratings uh at some time. <laughs> Mid 80s, I think. Um so I went to see this at the cinema. Anyway, uh it's a film directed by starring and directed by Clint Eastwood, uh, based on the book by Craig Thomas which I've not read, but I did read the sequel, uh, Firefox Down, which I've still, I think I've still got it somewhere, uh, which wasn't bad. Quite enjoyed it. We're okay. But I've not read the original, the first, the you know, the, the book that, it's, that this film's based on. Uh, right. Uh, as I said, stars uh, Clint Eastwood, also stars Freddie Jones, David Huffman, Warren Clark, Ronald Lacey, Kenneth Colley, uh, Nigel Hawthorne. Uh, who else? We've got Kai Wolf. Uh, and that's about it. Wolf Carla appears as um, future Soviet Premier Yuri Andropov. Not that you know. It had a budget of $21 million and made $47 million at the box office. I think it were classed, it, so it did okay. I think it was classed as like, you know, a, a moderate hit, even though it didn't get particularly good reviews. Uh, it's got a nice score by Maurice Jarre, or is it Jarre? I don't know how you pronounce his name. Uh, so there we go. So that's the info on the film. Right. So let's just get, let's just pile into it, shall we? By the way, before we start, again, uh, the version that we're going through here uh, on the com well, I've got on my computer is the theatrical version. The one I watched here, my Blu ray version that I've watched today, is the extended version. I didn't even know there was one, but this is extended. I had to look it up because I, I watched it. I think it, hang on. I haven't seen this part before. Um, so I looked it up on the internet, and the, there's an extended version. It's about blah, 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 about 12 minutes added. Um, it's mostly like just extended dialogue scenes. Um, you get a scene um, um, where we learn more about uh, why the dissidents in Russia are doing what they're doing and stuff like that. Uh, but there's, there's an extended scene of um, Clint Eastwood's character, Mitchell Gant, um, training up for the mission because uh, in the theatrical version he gets you know he gets volunteered to do it and then bang he's in London having his false moustache put on 
and all this stuff, and he's, he's, they're sending him to Moscow. Uh, but in in the extended version, uh, you see him training. Uh, he's getting back into the groove of flying aeroplanes and stuff like that. So that were nice, but uh, we can't see that because I haven't been able to find a version of this on the interwebs, um, and I can't rip this to my computer because I haven't got a, um, a Blu-ray drive on my computer. I could have done it through my... Um, you know, plugged my PlayStation 5 into my computer and copied it that way, but I didn't have time because I didn't realise. So I have to remember that for uh, another another time if I come across another extended version. <sighs> so there we go. But but I've put a link in the description. There's a, a website uh, called moviecensorship.com that um, uh, they've got a, a page showing the, the extended scenes. Um, I'll show you here, actually. I'll, I'll show you it. Uh, just bear with me. Uh, here we go. Here it is. There we go. Moviesensitive.com, Firefox, theatrical version, extended version. It shows the extended scenes and how long they go on for and the timestamp. Like I say, you just get a, a scene with uh, Gant and uh, Captain Buchholz and then a little bit with uh, Freddie Jones's character saying all he has to do is fly the plane like the devil himself. Have this one on HD DVD? No, I don't. I don't think I do. Do I? <laughs> I don't think I do. Um, you got me wondering now. Uh, I'll have to check that photo I took. <laughs> I don't think I have. You got me wondering. Anyway, I don't think I have. Uh, I've got it on VHS somewhere. I'm sure I've got. Or, yeah, I'm sure I've got on VHS somewhere. But the only version I've seen is the theatrical version. This is the first time I've seen the extended one. I said some of the little little scenes. Oh, I would see that there's a scene where we learn how expendable Mitchell Gant is to the SIS. You know, it's basically the CIA, but they call it the SIS in this. Um, uh, oh, and there's the the ones of him he's get training up. Is uh, getting super duper at flying. Can even fly upside down. Look, and this is the chap that's saying he's expendable in not so many words. Uh, that's it. Nice little page. I've put a link in the description for that. So anyway, so there we go. Uh, right, so get rid of, uh, get rid of that. Right. Uh, what does the devil need with an airplane? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right, so off we go. Let's get on with this film. See what I can remember about it. Uh, on the, the Blu-ray, there's not many special features. There's a little documentary about Clint Eastwood directing and it shows him directing this film uh, but you don't really learn much about it to be completely honest um, he doesn't like doing auditions does Clint Eastwood or auditioning other actors um, I think he likes actors to be recommended or he likes working with actors he's worked with before rather than having them come in and read lines he just uh, likes recommendations more than anything um, oh why and the um the documentary is that good. Um, it's it's um, hosted by a chap called, I've forgotten, it's like Ian Richardson. It looks familiar. I've seen him somewhere before, maybe on the BBC. He's got a very clipped BBC accent. Um, and he gets Mitchell Gant's name wrong. <laughs> he calls him Mitchell Grant. Idiot. Anyway, right, off we go. So, make myself titchy tiny. Have, have I done all my talking? Um, yes, yeah, we won't bother with all that stuff down. Where is it down there? You know all that. Uh, right, so I'll uh, get rid of them. There we go. And I'll make myself teach tiny as I do. I, can't, I can never remember which one it is. Is it that one? Yes, it is that one. Right. Now then, off we go. Oh, I'll share the bugger, silly son. There we go. <laughs> I'm all I did that I'm really tired. I'm really tired today. I were up all night Saturday and all night Sunday watching WrestleMania because I'm an idiot, but it was amazing. But uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm all out of kilter. Right, we're off. Warner Brothers. It's a Warner Brothers film. Um, there it is. Uh, this is a nice uh, Blu ray rip. Uh, why isn't it the extended version? I've no idea why. Right, so we begin. Right, we see a helicopter going through some mountains. Uh, I think it's supposed to be Alaska, uh, as we'll see. Um, 
And the titles are up to much. <laughs> there we go. That's it. Bang. Firefox. It's like an episode of the Six Million Dollar Man or Kojak or whatever. Not that I'd watch Kojak. It's got bloody Telis of Alice in. Ironside or something like that. It's that sort of font, in it, that they had in the 70s where all the TV stuff starts getting up. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But there it is. Firefox. And that's it. It just comes on. And we see uh, Mitchell Gant, Clint Eastwood, uh, going for a jog. I think it's supposed to be Alaska. I think it does say. Uh, and he sees the helicopter. So he starts running away from the helicopter uh, for some reason. Uh, we learn he's got PTSD. They don't call it that in this. They call it something else. Um, can't remember. Um, but he's suffering from that. Um from his time in, as a pilot in Vietnam, and he has flashbacks of him basically napalming a village. Uh, and also he got um, he got shot down and captured. Uh, so he has flashbacks of that. Anyway, this helicopter's coming into land. So he runs into his shack and he uh, gets his gun out and then he starts having one of his flashbacks. Uh, is he going to show it? Here he is. He's going. There we go. Uh, cut to grainy vision. Uh, yeah, shell shock, yes, because <laughs> Wind Grace is from the First World War. <laughs> they don't call it that in that, they call it something else. Um, we'll see when, when we might we might just end up on that bit. Uh, if we're lucky, I can't remember the uh, the term they use. Um, no, I can't remember. Right, anyway, so we cut to grainy vision. Uh, I think this is deliberate, so this, this matches the, the um, stock footage that they use. Uh, so we see him in the plane. Um, there you go. Stock footage of... Don't ask me what plane it is. Is it a Phantom? I have no idea. I know nothing about planes. Sci-fi question. No, but he's not here. So there we go. <laughs> uh, they were dropping napalm and stuff. I presume it's napalm. I don't bloody know. And bombs and things. Blowing up the jungle. Um... And then he gets shot down. Um, there you go. He gets uh, hit and he bails out. He's got to hit the old silk. Um, so off he goes. More stock footage. Um, I think that's why they, they made it look grainy. Also to make it look different, I suppose, because it's uh, you know it's in his head. It's a flashback. Uh, there we go. He's being captured. He's kept in a bamboo cage because you know they're in the far east. So everything's made of bamboo in it. Everything is made of bamboo. Even underpants are made of bamboo these days. But anyway. Uh, I'll just assume this is the Jack O'Neill origin story. Imagine Clint Eastwood playing Jack O'Neill. It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? What would Stargate have been like, the original film, if it had been uh, Clint Eastwood instead of Kurt Russell? Would it have been any different, I wonder? Don't know. Uh, anyway, right. So there he is, being captured. Look, uh, looking at exactly the same age. Oh, I'm going to show there. Exactly the same age as it does now. I don't know when when this is supposed to have. I suppose v Vietnam, the Vietnam War was still going around. I don't know, 1975 when it ended, wasn't it? Was it something like that? So we can say this is supposed to be set in the early 80s, maybe. So it might have only been five or six years uh, since this happened. So it might not have aged much. Uh, oh, wow. Then some other helicopters come and shoot all the bad guys. There we go. And presume he gets, he gets rescued. But then he sees this little girl. And then all the napalm comes. <laughs> Do you feel lucky, Ra? <laughs> uh, this energy stuff. Did I shoot five times or six? You know, the excitement I couldn't remember. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> oh uh, anyway, so he sees her getting. Uh, hang on. There we go. So for some reason, some like World War Two planes come flying over. It seems to be, but I don't know. It's like sort of seen out of airplane. Uh, anyway, they come over and drop napalm. Obviously, they don't hit him. Uh, but everybody else dies, and then they cut back to present day. Um, we see uh, the pilot staring at him. They're going, uh, Maj Major Gant, are you all right? Um, but uh, they get him out of there. Right, so then we cut to some conference room somewhere. Don't know where it is. Is it in the Pentagon? Don't know. Don't know where it is. But there's lots of big wigs uh, there. 
And this is Freddie Jones playing, I suppose it's supposed to be like M, maybe, from James Bond. I don't know. But he's obviously a British a British member of the SIS. I'm guessing this is some joint intelligence agency. I don't know these things. Um, but it's ta talking about the uh, MiG-31, the Firefox, um, which at the time were a fictional aeroplane, but since this time, you know, there, there has been a real MiG-31, uh, but it's not called the Firefox, it's called the Foxhound. And apparently, I don't, I don't know these things, but for what I've read, it's just a, uh, a modernised version of the MiG-25. But, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to do, see, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to point one out to you, so I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so we're learning that the, the uh, MiG-31, the Firefox, is the most amazing plane ever built. And um, it can travel up to Mach 6. And, um, you know, they say our best bodies, body design begins to melt at Mach 3. And it's got a thought-controlled weapon, um, we yeah, weapon system where the pilot just has to think about what to do and it, the plane does it. And it's all this stuff. It's amazing. It's an amazing plane. Um, so that's uh, what we're learning about. Uh, they didn't think it were going to be ready for another 10 years, but now Freddie Jones is telling them that uh, the plane is flying. It's it, it took it, you know, it's been tested, it's it's out there. Pardon me. So that's what we're learning here. Uh, it's also like a stealth air. I don't think, I think it's supposed to be stealthy. I don't think it, it shows up on radar. Um, I've seen. I don't know if it's made of a stealth material, if it's just that fast. It can outrun radar. I don't know. Can you outrun radar? I have no idea. <laughs> but anyway. So, oh, there you go. The Soviets developed some sort of anti-radar capability for the aircraft. And it does look like a stealthy aircraft, I suppose. Anyway, Josh Temple's arrived with his harpoon. I don't know how good the harpoon will, will go against the MiG-31. <laughs> Uh, uh, maybe if we go to warp, yes, maybe. I'm sure it could. I'm sure it could. Give an half a chance. Anyway, so back to Alaska. We learned uh, this is Captain Buchholz is being sent to um, recruit Mitchell Gant to steal the plane. We're learning all about how he's, uh, you know, there's a, he's a legend among the uh, the pilots back at base. Um. Apparently, we're part of what's called the Aggressor Squadron. I don't know if that's a real thing. That were American pilots taught specifically to go up against, you know, Soviet uh, machinery and planes and stuff. And, and he was the best of the best of the best, sir, apparently. Uh, right, we're looking at a chart now. Look about um, how good the MiG-31 is. You know, it's super ace. 50,000 pounds of thrust per... <laughs> per second per second that's the ice station zebra thing what else we got um these tamanskis deliver an excess of capacity of 100 percent. what's a tamanski i have no idea sci-fi question no um combat ceiling 120 000 feet plus uh increasing capacity 100 percent capacity of what no idea <laughs> and there we go can speed in excess of Mach 5, even Mach 6, and able to maintain it because it's super duper. Uh, our best body design begins to Mach at Melt 3. And then we learn that it was designed by a scientist called Baranovic, uh, who's played by uh, Nigel Hawthorne, uh, who's a, a, you know, a genius in theoretical physics and aircraft design and all this stuff, but is a, is, is a Jewish chap, and obviously in the Soviet Union, you know, the Jewish people were um, uh, subjugated, weren't they? And, you know, held in the gulags and stuff like that. And he's not a free man. He's, he's working under duress. And he and his team are the ones getting the information out through, like, the, the Soviet underground sort of thing uh, to the West. And that's how they know about it. Best of the best. That's our double feature today. You know, I've never seen best of the best. I know what you mean. <laughs> <clears throat> right. So where were we? So the, the the talking about how amazing the plane is. This chap's telling them about the thought controlled weapon system. Blah blah blah. How it means the pilot you know, uh, will have a, an advantage over you know Western aircraft. Uh, that's it. It's super amazing. 
And um, if the if that one these in real life, just Russia would just take over the world, wouldn't they? <laughs> but um, uh, apparently, this is by the way, the story is based on something that really happened in 1976. Uh, a Soviet pilot took his I can't remember which was it a MiG 25. I can't remember. I did look it up, but I've forgotten. Uh, I think it would have landed a MiG 25, which I think at the time was supposed to be the most advanced aircraft fighter plane in the world, and landed it. Basically defected, took it, landed it in Japan, and defected to the west. And it brought manuals and stuff with him as well. Um, um, and then, then I think it will learn it wasn't as amazing as everybody thought. It was a good plane, but uh, it wasn't as amazing. I think I remember seeing somewhere that they opened it up and they were found that you know it was all like old technology um, inside, like, you know, valves and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> They're expecting all this amazing new Soviet technology and it wasn't, it were all old fashioned. But it was still a good plane, apparently. Uh, even though it were oldy worldy. Uh, and apparently the Japanese just took it apart, um, learned all they could from it, I suppose, gave all the information to the Americans and sent it back to the Soviet Union. Here's your plane back. I presume the pilot stayed uh, in the West. I don't know. Anyway, right, uh, that's uh, oh, this is a, a a naval admiral who I think just uh, just had this one line. That had that one line. Maybe he's an actual admiral. I don't know, but he just goes, "That is correct, sir." It says it, you know, really deadpan. But, uh, so maybe he's a real admiral just getting a cameo. I have no idea. I'm maybe just a terrible actor. Um, because they're well, uh, learning about uh, Mother One, which is where Mitchell's got to land to refuel the plane. But uh, we're not told what it is yet. So he's saying uh, his, his team is ready to go. Uh, there's uh, Buchholz telling him he's got to steal the plane. He says, we'll get you there. You've just got to fly it. Because he's the, you know, you're the best there is. Um, the Soviets have a knack for that sort of thing. Instead of spending millions on a space pen, they used a pencil. Yeah, I think that's a that, that an urban legend. I'm sure that's an urban legend, isn't it? Um, that's um, not quite true. I think. Um, I think they did use pens, uh, but I think in in space, I don't think it really matters anyway. They're supposed to like is it the was it the Parker pen or the something like that, wasn't it? Or the paper? There were a pen, wasn't there, that you could use in space. That NASA, you know, the legend is spent millions um, because it uses a pump or something to to get the ink to the to the and they could use it in space. But apparently, I think just normal ballpoint pens work fine in space, and they just the the pressure of the the capsule or cabin or whatever keeps the ink flowing. It's not to do with gravity; it's to do with the pressure in it in the pen. Apparently, well, there you go. Uh, so they do work, and I don't think they use pencils because you don't want to be like rubbing stuff out or having pencil sha shavings floating about your spacecraft, do you? But then again, they're always fannying about. I nearly swore then, fannying about with um, water and stuff like that. Aren't they? And these videos that they do, I'll be water going flowing about. <laughs> anyway, so there we go. <laughs> Detour. Um, oh wow, we also learned that Mitchell Gant, uh, as a Russian mother, um, he's spoken the language since birth. <laughs> well, you'll believe it listening to Clint Eastwood, but never mind. Uh, and he's exactly the same size as Colonel Voskov, who the suit and cockpit were built for. And then this general, uh, I'm gonna show him, um, him, uh, he says, because he's he's got doubts about the. The mission, and he's saying, "No, oh, so the success of this comes down to the fact that we've got a guy who fits the pressure suit." Was he in V? Let me look him up. Um, did he play the um, the priest in V? Um, let's have a look. See if it says. If we can find him, uh, Thomas Hill, General Brown. Probably not be him now. Probably not be him now. That. Uh, credits, see all. Uh, oh, yes, it was. Yes, it did. Yes, it played Father Andrew Doyle. Yes, I was right. Uh, that's what I've seen him in. Bit of an idiot in that. <laughs> <laughs> he thought, you know, he could take the little girl to the visitors, to Diana, and be a, an olive branch of truth, of trust, I mean. 
And they probably ate him. I don't think. I think they killed him, didn't they? <clears throat> um, so anyway, but the decision has been made. They're sending him in, and um, essentially is is saying, um, you know, what if I don't? What if I don't want to go? You know, plenty of men could fly that plane. Says Mitchell. Says you fly it. He says no, not with your qualifications. Um, but the, essentially. Um, the forcing him to go um, because you know he says no, you know I'm out of the the business and all that, you know. But then Book also has got to use his bribery card. He says this is all government land. I've been authorised to tell you it could go into the private sector. So he says, so what you're telling me, you've found your volunteer. So there we go. Um, there you go. That's where he's uh, telling him, you know, the cho the decisions being made is going. And then it cuts directly to um, this bit where he's we're learning is he's, he's going to be replacing this chap, Leon Sprague. In the extended version, it goes into the, all his training and he's, he starts off in a flight simulator. And then it shows him flying actual planes and then doing other stuff um, and learning how we learn how he's expendable. Um, but um, but that's not in this. It's just it's just there. We're learning he's going to replace this chap, Leon Sprague or Sprague, as it's sometimes as it's sometimes pronounced. Um, who's an American businessman who goes to the Soviet Union selling carburetor parts? But what he's really doing is a drug smuggler, and he's got heroin. Pardon me. Um, so he's going to go in, and uh, that he's his cover. He's going to go in as Leon Sprague. So I, 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 I was confused by this from the very beginning because you'd think alarm bells would go off, wouldn't you? Because um, we learned that Leon Sprague's already there in the Soviet Union in Moscow. Uh, but then Mitchell Gant comes in, presents to be Leon Sprague. You think that like, alarm bells would go off. So like, hang on, you're already here. But uh, I don't know. Geez, unexplained mysteries. Uh, Already has a video up about an unknown object spotted during the eclipse. There always are, though. There's always UFOs seen during eclipses. Um, I'll have to look for that. I'll have to look for that. I just caught it, by the way, the eclipse on YouTube. I just I was just on YouTube, just watching other stuff. And then I saw, I think NASA Space Flight had a video up. So I just clicked on that. And it just as it went to totality, like within like 10 seconds of it happening, it, you know, 10 seconds of me putting the video on it went to a total eclipse and it was cool so there we go anyway uh right so he's gonna go in and um replace that man then he's in london london england uh, the houses of parliament the mother of parliament you might say uh close to where danger mouse lives <laughs> Uh, so this is where he's going to get sent to uh, to Russia from 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 London. Uh, the putting his, um, I presume it's a false moustache. He's, he's applying a false moustache. You think they'd just let him grow one out, wouldn't you? But he seems to be sticking on a false moustache. But you think if they're being super, you know, um, being this um, thorough, you think just grow a moustache, will you? Because they've had four months or something. It's, it's not just happening. We're told that got, they've got four months to train him up. So he could have grown a moustache in that time. But anyway, she's sticking a false one on. Um, but I suppose, luckily enough, because later on he actually takes it off. So he can looks more like a, he gets another identity thing. To, so he pulls off his moustache, then that's probably why. Anyway, so... Um, Freddie Jones is telling him about the KGB. He's saying he's got to go in. Basically, be careful. Don't draw attention to yourself. Because um, he says, by its sheer size, the KGB is often slow to react. And he says, it's like a monster. If you creep by quietly enough, it may just you know, open an eye and sniff at you. He says, but if you awaken it, you're in trouble. Uh, he says, what he's got to remember, all he's got to do, he's got to get to his hotel and then meet his contacts on the, whatever it's called, I think it says here. There we go. Krasnohomsky Bridge. Um, uh, at the time, and then, you know, that's all he's got to do. And then they'll tell him what to do next. Uh, whatever they tell you to do, you do. So, right, so off he goes. 
He says, um, this this is uh, this is the end of our relation. This is, end, this is the end for us. But then he says, oh, no, it's actually it's the beginning. So, right, so off he goes. Oh, and he's given a, uh, a little portable radio, uh, but it turns out it's a tracking device that he's got to install in the aircraft uh, when he gets... Uh, when he gets, when he steals the plane, he's got a. It'll tell him when he's getting close to Mother One, where they can refuel. So, but it just looks like a portable radio, a little transistor radio. It says if, if they check it, it'll just look like it'll even pick up the local stations. But it's actually a highly sophisticated two-way monitoring system. Blah blah blah. Uh, what else? Um, oh, why wow, we also learned about the the black box that's in the plane, which. Which is a recording device, and they want him to speak into it, uh, use it as a diary, so that you know, if the plane is destroyed or crashes, and they can somehow recover it, they may be able to get some information. So that's what we learn about that. Right. Off as off he goes. He says, "It's good, damn bloody good." Good old Freddie Jones, uh, the father of Toby Jones, who we've seen many times on Magnificent Mondays. There you go, Black Box is telling him about that. Right, so, the end of the road for us. I like to say the beginning, and off he goes. Then he um, has a little chat with Buck Holtz. Oh, there we see a, a, a visual effect plane fly over. It's not too bad, is it? Not too bad, but you can tell it's a visual effect. Right, he's in Russia, the Soviet Union. Um, I think the the... the Parts in Moscow were filmed in Vienna in Austria because Vienna in Austria must look like the Soviet Union, must look like Moscow. I don't know. I've never been to Moscow, but I have been to Vienna. Uh, and a very nice city it is. Oh, Vienna. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, that, by the way, Vienna by Ultravox uh, was the first single I ever bought for myself. There you go. Back in 1981. Right, where were we? Uh, right, so he arrives at customs in Moscow. Um, he's telling them that he's here on business. And I'll be thinking, don't the noise there already? I don't know. I suppose, because it's in, it's in the early 80s, so they haven't got the super-duper computers we have now, have that it won't come up. And they're just, he's there with a stamp, isn't he? And he's just doing his job. So, anyway. So, off he goes. Oh, wow, they're searching his, uh, his bags and stuff. And they find the... Um, the radio and he's complaining he's saying you've never searched my bags before well, this is you know an outrage and all that and, you know i'm gonna go to your superiors and then this chap lifts up the radio that's vitally important uh, he says are you threatening me mr sprague did you try their sausages i've never had viennese sausages no, or vienna sausages uh, but that fella in um Sky Captain, he likes them, doesn't he? Uh, Omar Jalili, the, act, the actor's name. He likes Vienna, Viennese sausages, doesn't he? Uh, I've never tried them. As, not, not knowingly, anyway. Uh, anyway, this chap says, are you threatening me, Mr Sprague? And he goes, no. So, right. so anyway, so he gets through this first round of uh, um, you know, papers, please. Uh, so now we're outside the airport. Uh, where were it filmed, by the way? Where were it? I know the, the Vienna. Where else? Where else was it filmed? Uh, production, production, production. Where are we? Did, 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 did. Uh, Vienna, as I've said, Montana. Um, I bet the the I bet Alaska double uh, Montana double for Alaska. I bet that's what happened here. California, London, and Greenland's Thule. Is it Thule or Thule? I don't know how to pronounce it. Air Force Base. Um, I don't know where that that might that might have doubled for. Bilnyask, where they get the um, where the Firefox is uh, located, maybe I don't know. Uh, and the second unit film was in San Diego, and Hollywood aerial cinematographer Clay Lacey flew second unit aerial sequences in a Learjet, um, presumably to get all the um, you know the plates for the the clouds and stuff. I presume. Anywho. Uh, na, 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 na. Right, oh, off we go. Right, anyway, it's in Moscow now, so there we go. We know it's Moscow because it says there, Mokba. <laughs> uh, and we see a, I don't know, is that a, a lad? That's the, 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 the Russian car, isn't it? My mate used to have a lad. Um, 
Right, so here we go. He's off to his hotel. Hotel Moscow is going to. Uh, as I presume this is Vienna. Um, here he goes. So he gets out. He walks the rest of the way. Then he walks in front of a um, a rear projection of Red Square. <laughs> obviously, they couldn't go and film in Moscow. I think the first film, the first big Western film that was actually filmed in Moscow, um, were um, oh, what they call it now. Um, Red Heat, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger film. I think that was the first big stu you know, Hollywood studio film filmed in uh, in uh, in Soviet Russia, I think. Um, right. So, but he's here, he's walking in front of a, either a rear projection or a blue screen or whatever, I don't know. Probably a rear projection because it looks pretty good, doesn't it? But, uh, so there he is. Yeah, then he gets to the Moscow Hotel, which is obviously in Vienna. Uh, so in he goes. Uh, his room is obviously bugged because we we see a chap listening to him. Uh, he has a little drink of uh, vodka because it's Russia. <laughs> He's just biding his time, waiting to go and meet his people. There he being watched through a two-way mirror. Unbelievable. And there's looking out over the courtyard watching men goose stepping because it's Russia. <laughs> it's the Soviet Union. Uh, got to get all the stereotypes in. Uh, speaking of stereotypes, we've got Ken Colley, Admiral Piet himself, uh, as I can't remember his name. You know what I'm like? Ken Colley. Where are you? Colonel Kontarski. Um, and uh, where is it? I'm trying to find him. Uh, oh, bloody hell, where is he? Where is he? Dimitri. Come on, Dimitri, where are you? Where is he? I can't find him. <laughs> is he here somewhere? Is he here somewhere? Not showing him. <sighs> dear. Anyway, whoever he is, he plays Dimitri somebody or other. And, oh, there he is. Oh, no, it's somebody else. <laughs> I'm going to have to go to the old cast and crew. Unbelievable. You're letting me down, IMDb. I think it's him. I think it's him. I could be wrong. Uh, I think he's uh, Major Lanyev. I think. But I, might, I might be wrong. <laughs> I might be wrong. Anyway, whatever. Whatever it's called. They both got really thick Russian accents. See if it... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll unmute it and I'll have a listen because they've got proper thick Russian accents putting it on. Uh, we'll go back a bit. Hang on, where are we? Sure, I'm sure I muted that. Let's go back again. There we go. Bear with me. Very good. Victor. Now tell me, where will our traitors be in the hours before the flight? <laughs> where will our traitors be in the hours before the flight? Unbelievable. Very thick, thick accent, you know, like shitty accent, you know. <laughs> Leaf, uh, well, 10 points if you know what film that's off. Shitty accent, real good at all. Um, so they're hamming it up. Um, they play good parts, actually, I must admit. Um, kind of, you know, sympathetically, you know, they're not like stereotypical bad guys, uh, although they do bad things. But uh, here we're learning about, you know, what's going on at, uh, at Bill Yask, is where they're building the plane. I'm testing it from, um, and that they learn that you know something's going on, they know there's some traitors, they know that information is being getting out, so they want to round up this, this cadre of traitors. Anyway, Wingrace says, I like Red Heat for the novelty of two actors going by the names they don't know, uh, James, not Jim Belushi, and Larry. Um, oh, they don't now, sorry. James, not Jim Belushi and Larry, not Lawrence Fishburne. I'm a simple man. <laughs> it's good he's ready. It's a fun film. It's a fun film. Oh, Josh Canapke is here. Yay! He's here. Had to recover from the eclipse. Yes, the council is convened. <laughs> hip, hip. Hurrah! Anyway. So, there you go. I think there's going to be somebody there to sabotage the plane or whatever. Um, so right, right, he's going now to meet his um, his contacts. So off he goes, and he's got, he's got to get there with his KGB, um, whatever the observers or whatever, uh, in tow. So he can't lose them. So 
but he can't draw attention to himself either. So he can't let them know that he knows that they're there, if you know what I mean. So off he goes. Right, so so he gets to the bridge. This is where we meet um, Warren, is it Warren Clark as Pavel or Pavel? Uh, and we meet the uh, the real Leon Sprague. Here they are. Eating them. Uh, this is in Vienna, by the way. Uh, the author were here for the filming of this scene. Um, Craig Thomas, who invited over with his wife or whatever, they watched this the, this scene being filmed. I only know that because we're on that documentary that's on the um, the Blu-ray. Anyway, so this is the real Leon Sprague, and he's trying to be all like a spy, and he says, oh, if they know where he, we've got to get him out of here. Pavel, calls him Pavel, not Pavel. Uh, so Warren Clark tells him, you know, take, take his cigar, smoke it, says it like that, smoke it. Um, so that's what he does. And then, so, because you can see they look a bit alike, both got glasses and a moustache. Um, but he takes the cigar, this, this real sprag, and Warren Clark goes and beats him to death with the bludgeon. He bludgeons him as the, the other fella holds on to where. Uh, Mitchell, so that poor Mister Sprague. Remember, he's a drug a drug dealer, so don't feel much sympathy for him. Uh, so he's been beaten to death, and he gives him his papers. He gives Mitchell Gant, um, Leon Sprague's papers, even though he does have his own. Obviously, if he's got the the Leon Sprague that's been there a while's papers, maybe there'll be more. Um, you know, um, what's the word? Because they're his real papers, are they? So they'll be more um, um, persuasive, um, whatever. Right, so they've got to get out of there. They'll either throw his body in the river uh, and they get out of there. And they head to the uh, subway. There's the KGB men there, fine Sprague. They have killed Mr. Leon Sprague. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> they have killed him. So off they go. They get to the uh, the metro, down the go. Um so they've got to go to a different station, you know, so everything's under control, do as you're told, etc. Uh, I think they tell him to go to the bathroom and get yourself um, sorted out. Oh, there he takes off. Uh, oh, right, gives him new papers. That's it, I forgot. He gets new papers. He's got, now called Michael Lewis, and he's a tourist from America. And obviously in the photo, he's not got a moustache, so he pulls off his fake tash. Right, so he gets on the... Uh, on the uh, the tr the train, he nearly misses it because he has one of his episodes as he's waiting for the train and the flashing of the lights and stuff. It triggers a, an episode, so he starts twitching and freaking out, and he just gets on the uh, on the uh, the train in time. Uh, you know, don't draw attention to yourself. You know, he's nearly diving through through the door. Look, running after the train, but just getting one of the nearby ones, silly man. But don't draw attention to yourself. Anyway. So, off the go. Is this what the uh, the Moscow Metro looks like? I have no idea, but uh, <laughs> we will see. Uh, we see uh, soldiers are coming, look, and, and KGB uh, officials uh, questioning people because uh, you know, they found the body in the river. They go, soldiers are being deployed. Um there we go. So they get off at the next station and um, he gets stopped uh, by this chap, another KGB. Um, and he says, you don't look much like your photograph. Your hair's darker. And he says, yes, I was a little heavier then. He says, you do not look well, Mr. Lewis. And he says, you know, he's had stomach problems. Uh, the food at the hotel is a bit rich and, uh, and all that. So he says... Um, Okay, I will not detain you anymore. And off he goes. And then Warren Clark speaks to him. You're not very convincing. And then he gets angry at thing and telling him, you know, you kill Sprague, you do all this. You know, I, want, I wasn't expecting all this. So he says, go over to the toilets and clean yourself up. Um, uh, he'll get searched several more times before he leaves the station. Um you know, asked for asked, asked for his papers several more times before he reaches, uh, leaves the station. So off he goes to the 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 bathroom uh, as they look 
well dodgy. Papers, please. Here you go. Here you go, Gavner. By the way, the, the language in this is... Um, they keep switching between Russian and English, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> I know it's to show that they're in Russia, but I'm not sure if he's supposed to be speaking English to like Warren Clark and the other Russian people, or if he's supposed to be speaking Russian. But then we see him pretending to speak Russian later on. You know, he's supposed to be fluent. You know, the character supposed to be fluent in Russian because he's speak spoken it since birth. So. So why, why they're speaking English and then sometimes in Russian? I don't understand, but anyway, whatever. Whatever. Anyway, so he goes into the, the stall and uh, he starts having another episode. Uh, and a, a Russian agent comes in um, and starts asking, you know, come out of there. And he says, oh, it won't be a minute. So he comes out. So he's asked to see his papers. He says, you don't look well. He says, I've had some stomach problems, blah, blah, blah. And it says, your papers are not in order. And says, they're, they're in order. Look at them again. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> um, says, no, they are not in order. And then he thinks he's going for his gun. And Scottish Geek guys here. Howdy, folks. Do. <laughs> and welcome to the show. We're doing Firefox and he's about to get rumbled. He's Mitchell Gant by this KGB officer. Do you think the KGB officer is going for his gun? We want to actually go have some cigarettes, as we see there. Uh, so now, basically, it's to fight him now. So now he's not Mitchell Gant anymore. He's Philo Bedo. <laughs> uh, is, is where he fights. Look, now let's go back again. Remember Philo Bedo in uh, every which way but loose and any which way you can. He's a fighter, bare knuckle fighter, isn't he? So he goes. Push, push. Like that. Just like Philo Bedo. Don't know no Philo Bedo. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I love them films. I haven't seen them for years. I'm going to have to dig them out. <sighs> anyway, so he's fighting him. And then he um, basically kills. Now he gets that. Luckily, that's there. The towel holder. And throttles him with it. Kills the KGB fellow. Warren Clark comes in. Sorry, Pavel. Keep calling him Warren Clark. I'm probably even getting that wrong, actually. Is it Warren Clark? <sighs> yes, it is Warren Clark. Yes. Um, pulls him off and says, You stupid American, you have killed him. Um, so, anyway, so they said, uh, it said my papers weren't in order. And you know, says, Papers are in order. I was searched too. My papers were also in order. I thought, well, yeah, but it did say your papers are not in order. But anyway, so they hide the body and he uh, tells him to go. You know, he will be searched again. Anyway, he gets to a clue, uh, gets to a, a clue, gets to a queue. Um, and um, he sees a, a soldier going into the bathroom. Uh, so he decides to jump the queue. Um, he walks down to the front and he says, I'm an American, I don't know what to do. So I thought, I thought that, was a, that was a good idea, to be honest. Um, so so the uh, so he's jumped the queue and they check his papers, you know, and they say everything's okay. And then uh, another E comes, pardon me, and he looks familiar, and I don't know what I've seen him in. I mean, he looks very familiar. It's, uh, it's probably an English actor, I don't know, but he looks familiar. Such long swings a capable fighter would whoop him. <laughs> Philo Bedo. <laughs> yeah, it's no two-handed smash to the mid back or jumping horizontal kick. <laughs> Kirk style. <laughs> anyway, ooh, sorry, little wires falling down. Anyway, this fella, another KGB official. He starts questioning us for his papers, so checking his papers again. You know, this guy's going to find the body. You've been most uncooperative in your behaviour. So, sorry. So, anyway, so there's a bit of uh, bit of drama, a bit of tension. Should, I, should we phone the hotel and see if anybody there knows you? And then, you know, wait, and he's looking at sweating. Ah! He says, no, I think we should trust you. So they let him go. He gets out just as they find the body. Um, it all kicks off. 
Um, so, but they get away. So they get to this um, like a business place. Um, they're going to go in this this van to Bill Bill Yask. So anyway, uh, this is good now. Now he's, he's not Michael Lewis anymore. Now he is Boris Glazunov, who is a real person, not in real life. I mean, he's taking the place of Boris Glazunov, and uh, who who's a he works there, but is taking his Boris Glazunov does not work today. He says, you know, we see the real Boris Glazunov later. Anyway, so so they're setting off first thing in the morning. So that's what they're doing. Oh, and he says, uh, Gant, can you fly that plane? Really fly it? And he, uh, there you go. Like that. He says, I'm the best there is. Like that's how he says it. <laughs> there you go. And that was saying, and the best there was and the best there ever will be because he's he is the uh, Bret Hart of fighter pilots. Anyway, right, next morning, we see uh, the KGB have arrived at the, wherever they are, the warehouse or wherever it is they are. So he gets gant up. Oh, wow, the fella's got a, an amazing voice. We're going to have to listen to his voice. <laughs> um, says, how many are in there? Just a minute. One car and three men inside. One car and three men inside. Is he bloody um, um, Bella Lugosi? Don't know, but uh, got an amazing voice. <laughs> anyway, so it gets Gant. It says, right, we've got to go. It says, KGB. It says, oh, is it one, you know, the ones that they say, no, these are ones assigned to the plane. They know about me. So off they go. Uh, this is a case of the KGB, one part of the KGB not knowing what the other's doing and all that. As as um, um, Freddie Jones said, you know, it's like a monster, and you know, it's it's slow to react. Um, but uh, anyway, right. So they're they're being followed now. They're heading out of the city. There they are heading out, and um, we learn that. Um, oh, why? It gets a bit racist here now, does uh, old Mitchell. says, what is it with you Jews? Don't you ever get tired of fighting City Hall? Like, Why do you bring that up? <laughs> and he says, fighting City Hall is one of the few luxuries we have. I've turned into Bella Lugosi now, but never mind. And he says, besides, I'm not a Jew. So, there you go. Um, right, so off they go. Right. Uh, now we learn that uh, the real Boris Glazunov is being arrested. Um, um, so the, the who who's in the who's in the van with Pavel? Um, but, uh, they don't you know they don't know. As I said, it's a monster, slow to react. They're just scratching their heads at the moment. They don't know what's going on. Uh, we learn that he's having his photo taken now. Um, Pavel tells him that KGB in the doorway. They're taking your photograph. As you can see in there, got a camera in his hand. But... You're taking a photo of Clint Eastwood. So now it's Clint Eastwood over there. It's the man with no name. Because they're all Cockney Muscovites. Muscovites, should I say. Anyway, so they carry on. Right, this is... Um, oh, this is Leon Sprague. The body the fished out of the river. Uh, this is the American ambassador or whatever. And uh, looking very suspicious. And he says... He says... As far as I can tell, that's Leon Sprague. There's a lot of damage to the face, of course. And he says, yes, you would think uh, it was deliberate, to you, so you couldn't identify him. Why would they do that? And he's like going, oh. Uh, let's see if it shows his face. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Should have a lot of beads of sweat down him, shouldn't they? But, yeah. uh, right, so anyway, the, having the van filled up with petrol. Or whatever they use in the Soviet Union back then. I don't know, probably vodka or something, isn't it? <laughs> um, that's what he's telling him about. Uh, his wife, his wife's been in prison for 12 years because she demonstrated the invasion of Czechoslovakia. Was that 1968? I think it was, wasn't it? When Soviet forces invaded Czechoslovakia. Anyway, his wife demonstra uh, demonstrated against it. She was put in prison. She's been there for 12 years and she is a Jew. And... Um, he spent the last, you know, so many years, 12 years, trying to live up to her standards or whatever. 
Uh, there you go. Trying to be worthy of them. That's, that's how I put it. Right, this is Boris Glazunov who they brought in. The real Boris Glazunov who was supposed to be in the van. But he's not. And this fellow's beating him up uh, and killing him. He kills him. Uh, the Colonel Comtask is not happy with that. He says, you've killed him. You pushed me. So he slaps him. Uh... Anyway, Dimitri, whatever the hell... I don't know him as Dimitri, I don't know, but they're all speaking with their thick, you know, put-on Russian accents. He would have told us anything under the pentathol. Blair! Anyway, right, so, saying, have the van stopped. But they're nearly there now, and he says, you're going to have to jump out. Was that on the right? Who's that on the right? Um, hang on, where, where were we? Let's go back again. That fella, don't know. He's, he's, this character's called Dimitri something or other, but I can't find him on the... Um, hang on, does it say on... Uh, on the, where are we? Do, 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 do. Is that him? Just let me check. That's Kenneth Colley playing um, uh, Colonel Kontarski, who you may know as Admiral Piet from Star Wars. Um don't know your photo of him. I don't know if it's him or not. I think it's an actor called Clive Merrison, I think. I think his character is Major Lanyev, I think. I think oh no, int, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong. It's Oliver Oliver Cotton, Dimitri Priabin. That's the uh the character's name, Dimitri Priabin. Oliver Cotton, never heard of him. Uh, the fella on the right, if that's who you meant. Um, uh, looks familiar. Yes, he does. Looks. Uh, I've seen him in stuff, but uh, you know, I don't know what. What's he been in? Let's have a look. A uh, British actor, still alive, born in 1944. He was best. He's best known for his role as Cesar uh, Borgia in the BBC's 1981 drama series The Borgias, uh, which I've ne never seen. Uh, what else has he been in? Uh, Christopher Columbus, the discovery, son of the Pink Panther. They were in that. Um, he were in Beowulf. He played Hrothgar, the voice of Hrothgar. Um, unless it's a different Beowulf, is that a different one? Oh, it's a different one. Sorry, it's not. I was thinking of the animated one. This one's a a film. He played Rothgar in that. Uh, Shanghai Knights. He played Jack the Ripper in Shanghai Knights. He was in the Dark Knight Rises as a two star Air Force general. Uh, so he got about, hadn't he? And he was in Wonder Woman 1984 as Simon Stagg. Who was Simon Stagg? Da -da 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 -da. I can't remember. Anyway, so there we go. That's who he is. Right, where were we? <laughs> Uh, I often think of certain parts of that animated one. I like it. I like that. Um, I, well, it's all right. <laughs> Ray Winston as Beowulf. I have come to kill your monster. Anyway, that's that's by the by. Right, have the van stopped. Right, so he's got to jump out. He's near the rendezvous where he's going to meet with uh, Ronald Lace's character. Uh, oh, I've got to look up again. Uh, Semelovsky. He's got to meet Semelovsky. Uh, Ron Lacey, you may know from um, Raiders of the Lost Ark. He played, um, I forgot his name now, uh, Tot, uh, the fellow that had the um, thing burnt onto his hand, that fellow. Uh, anyway, uh, right, where were we? So, right, there we go. Semelovsky was at the gas station. He'd be waiting after this turn, so he's got a jump for it. Um, but he can't lose, because remember, they're being followed. They're about to be stopped. Uh, being followed, so but going to do it round the corner so they won't see him jump out. So we see a Texas switch here, but a very slow one. Uh, so off he goes. Here he comes round the corner. Hang on. You're getting ready. Go on, jump. Jump your bugger. Well, there he goes. Here he goes. Uh, stuntman jumps out, and then... Ten minutes later, <laughs> the other car goes by, and then Clint Eastwood pops up. A Texas switch, albeit very slow. 
Uh, right. So, who's it? What's this? What's this bit now? Um, who's this? Um, don't know. It's a guard. Um, right. He finds uh, Semelovsky uh, tinkering with his car. He says, you're late. And he says, it was a long walk. And he says, you know, it's, it's, he says, it's been over an hour since I went through the first checkpoint. Remember, it's an Akin Air Force base that they're in now, Bill Yask. So imagine it's massive. <laughs> um, so it's got like a, a first checkpoint, a, you know, a main gate or whatever. And he says, it's been over an hour. Um, so they'll start wondering, you know, why I haven't got to the, the second checkpoint. And they'd send somebody to look for him. So he's making out his car's broken down. Uh, so we're going to put him in the boot, the trunk, whatever you want to call it. And he says, what the search there? And he says, it was searched already. So off we go. Right, so they arrive at the, the, the next checkpoint. And, um, you know, where have you been? He says, I had car trouble. And so he says, pop the hood and I'll have a look. And he says, your engine's filthy. As a scientist, you should know better. And he says, they work us too hard. And the other one, the other guard, is looking round suspiciously. And he think, we think he's going to look in the boot, drunk. Um, so, but he says, no, it's fine. And he's like, <laughs> so another looking suspicious. You know, don't draw attention to yourself. But, you know, anyway, he gets waved through. So off he goes. Uh, and this is where we meet uh, Nigel Hawthorne as Dr. Um, uh, Baranovich. There we are. So they take, take him inside. And uh, now he's got some time to kill and learn new things. All right. Meanwhile, Warren Mitchell, our uh, stunt driver that looks nothing like Warren Mitchell, is having a, a little uh, tussle with the KGB car. Uh, look, look, sod all like him, doesn't it? He's got a moustache. Suppose they went that. <laughs> but uh, look, nothing like Warren Mitchell, does he? Um, so the, the having a little, you know, shenanigans, get the, got their elbows out and all that. And then they start shooting at each other. And uh, they said Warren Mitchell. I mean Warren Clark. <laughs> Warren Mitchell's a totally different person. Pavel. But why can't I just call him Pavel? Uh, Warren Clark shoots. At the the car, uh, there, we, there we go. So obviously, knows that's the fuel tank, I presume. And um, for somebody, it just sets on fire, just magically. It must the, the bullet must have been hot or something. And uh, it goes over the uh, over there and blows up or whatever. And uh, oh ah, yes, uh, he drives his car into the his van into the the woods and crashes it into a tree and immediately just falls out. Uh, by the way, he got shot in the shoulder. I forgot to say that. He got shot in the shoulder, so he's injured. Uh, and there we go. So off he goes into the woods. Uh, right, so we learn about what's going to what what they're going to do. We learn that Bar uh, Baranovich um, is uh, is going to um, cause a diversion. Uh, Gant has got to get into the um, the hangar and get into the 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 changing rooms or whatever you want to call it, um, and kill Colonel Volk is it Volkov. I've forgotten already. Played by Kai Wolf. Voskov. You've got to kill Colonel Voskov, uh, shove his body in the locker. He says, you know, they've got good locks on, they won't be searched. Um, and then take a shower for an hour. <laughs> and he says that, you know, at such and such a time, you'll hear an alarm go off because we're going to do a... Uh, a diversion, we're going to start a fire and hopefully it'll... There's two planes, by the way, in the hangar. There's the prototype, uh, you know, the, well, there's the MiG-31 and then there's another one, what they call the prototype, so... Um, which is, you know... Um, it's unarmed, but it can be, you know, um, readied quickly. So, But they want to put that one out, out of action. Anyway, right, so I was telling him all this, and he said, we're going to start a fire, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all right, gives him some cigarettes, so he's got to learn to smoke. But we saw him smoking earlier on, didn't we, with a cigar? So he says, do you smoke? He says, no, not for years. We saw him smoking earlier on. No. Anyway. Uh, right, so there we go, telling him all about that. Um, but they've got some time to kill. 
Oh, we learned that uh, the the quarters are bugged, but they've got some tapes of TV sounds and innocuous talk. Uh, but when did they record that? Don't know. But you think whoever's listening and said, didn't they say this yesterday? <laughs> but anyway. Um, oh, wow, this is uh, Dimitri and um, doing a favour for this chap. Um, I think this is the fellow. Is this the fellow that were at... Um, Leon Sprague showing him Leon Sprague's body to the ambassador. I think it's because like I said that the different parts of the Soviet machine coming together, basically closing in on Mitchell Ganser, all coming from different areas, um, and closing in on him. And um, apparently, he's an old school friend of Dimitri, and he wants Dimitri's computer division to search for um, this fella. Um, so that's what he's doing. So then it says the. We've got a photo of him, and he's, um, uh, you know, he's gone going to Bill Yask or whatever. So they're closing in on him, right? So they bundled bundled him in a, uh, I presume it's a colonel's uh, uniform. Um, so that's how he's going to get to the uh, the hangar, right? So then, so when you hear the alarm, you just immediately come down. Get in the plane. He says, ignore what you see in the hangar, but, you know, get the plane, get it out, do your stuff, and all that jazz. Right. So, off he goes. Oh, that's where he's telling him about the thought-controlled weapon system as well. There you go. Thoughts are transmitted through the senses of your helmet, and, um, you know, whatever you think happens and all that, it's all automatic and all stuff like that. Um, it says, but the thing is, you have to think in Russian. You cannot think in English and transpose. Can you do that? He goes, yeah, I can do that. I'm like, yeah, of course you can. <laughs> of course you can. And there's telling about the weapons, there's cannons and missiles and a rearward defense pod which fires like incendiary stuff that could take out a missile, etc. Um, there you go, fires explosive backwards that could knock out a potential missile. Um, there you go, you must think in Russian. Right, so there, they've got dogs out searching the, the area, but here he is, uh, speaking in Russian. Don't know why it shows him speaking in Russian, but um, you'd think he'd be, had been speaking in Russian the whole time, wouldn't you? We wouldn't have to see Clint Eastwood trying to speak in Russian, but never mind. Uh, so here he is ordering somebody about in Russian. Uh, probably speaking as good Russian as me. I mean, Krasnyasny vet no, ne? I don't know. But, uh... <laughs> so off he goes to the hangar. Here we are. We're going to see it now. We're going to see his first look at the MiG 31. There it is. A beauty of a plane. So in he goes. He has a look. Uh, there we see the, the other one. Uh, the prototype, or whatever they call it, in the background. Um, yes, I want to suck your blood. Blah! <laughs> well, Eastern European accent. Oh, dear. Apologies to any Eastern Europeans watching. It's all in fun. I mean, my natural accent's worse than anything I could imagine. Oh, aye, then he comes face to face with Colonel Kontarski. There he goes, he goes, yes, Captain. And then he goes, oh, I, uh, uh, but not speaking Russian this time. He just goes, um, speaking in, you know, his broad American accent. I ordered some dogs to search the perimeter at checkpoint three or whatever. And says, oh, good idea. Carry on, etc. So off he goes. Right, so he heads into the, uh, the uh, dressing room area, changing room. And he starts to, ha you know, has, starts to have an episode, and then this soldier comes along and speaks, says something in Russian. Uh, I presume it's like, "Are you all right, Colonel?" And he goes, says something, you know, in Russian to him, and off he goes. Right, they're heading to work. Uh, right, so now he's fighting. Uh, he grabs hold of uh, Colonel Voskov, who comes in and beats the poop out of him. There we go. And and he's going to give him the killing blow. Oh, pardon me. And um, give him the killing blow. And he says, ah, you didn't do nothing. And just ties him up. Shoves him in the locker. You're going to start, you, aren't you? 
Who the cat's going to start? Uh, shoves him in a locker. And uh, he'll probably wish he didn't do that. But never mind. As we'll see later on. Right, so. They're out, they're out searching now. Uh, Warren Clark. Oh, I've never missed him. Warren Clark, there he is. Uh, oh, for God's sake. There he is. Um, running for his life. Through the, I presume it's the Austrian countryside, I don't know. But there he is, tying up Colonel Voskov, putting him in uh, probably his own locker. I presume that's Russian for Voskov. Could be. Uh, there he gets the pressure suit and the helmet out. Um, oddly enough, Clint, the good guy, is going to be wearing the black helmet. And later on, spoilers, when we get to that bit, Colonel Voskov in the prototype to chase him. He gets a white helmet, so he's the good guy. <laughs> Anyway, here's Warren Clark still, sorry, Pavel, still on the run. Right, it's time for him to take his shower for an hour. That rhymes. Poet, didn't know it. Um, in his undie plugs, because we're not going to get to see Clint Eastwood in the nudie, are we? Uh, right, they're working on the plane. Baranovich and, you know, his parts, replacing parts, blah, 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 just getting on with that. Oh, then he sees Kontarski watching him. And uh, there we go. No love lost between those. And he's looking down at... Stur I forgot his bloody name now. Ronald Lacey, whatever the hell he's called. Sem Semelovsky. There we go. Because uh, they're all in on it together, aren't they? They've all got uh, plans and stuff. Right. Um, right, so we've learned... They learn now that uh, he's there on the base somewhere. Uh, he's... Um, you know, this um, this mystery man who they want to find. And then we learn that he's being identified by one of the checkpoint guards. He's dressed as a colonel. And um, one of the checkpoint guards said the, um, he ordered a dog patrol and all that stuff. And says, yes, I spoke to this man myself. Blah! <laughs> there we go. There we go. I've seen this man. So he says, start searching everywhere. And he said, we've searched everywhere. We'll search again, he says. Every hanger, every closet, blah, blah, blah. You will find this man. So, so he's in the shower, and some uh, soldiers come in and said, Colonel Voskov, we have to search you. We need to see your papers. And I thought, he's not going to have me shower, is he? <laughs> Why don't you say, oh, me, me uniform's in, you know, just rough around there. I haven't got it with it. I'm in the shower. But no, he doesn't say that. He just says, I'm not to be disturbed. He's not speaking in Russian. Not even putting a Russian accent on. At least these are. The other the other people are putting Russian accents on. That me. Sorry, Comrade Colonel. Um, he's saying, I, you know, I don't want to be disturbed. You hear that, soldier? Um, there we go. But uh, anyway, so they go away. And then he has another episode. Off he goes with his twitchy, his twitchy cheek. Uh, there we go. <laughs> He's having an episode with PTSD. Oh, I forgot. I meant to look for what they call it in this film, didn't I? And I forgot. Um, just bear with me. Um, I do not say blah, blah, blah. I know that's off um, the Hotel Transylvania. I think that's the only part of that I've seen because my son keeps showing me it. <laughs> uh, just bear with me. I'm just going to check something. Just, just, just take that off a moment, just while I look for something. Hey, now then, being here somewhere. I'm looking at the uh, subtitle file. Um, open with notepad. Now then, what do they call it? No, I've gone too far, I've gone too far. Delayed stress syndrome, that's what they call it in this film. Delayed stress syndrome, right. Glad I've cleared that up. <laughs> Right. Uh, I've not seen any of those films, but oh, they are pretty good. I've not seen, I've just seen that, that bit, because for some reason my son showed me it once. I've seen another bit where you see somebody's bum. <laughs> and obviously that made Aidan laugh. Dad, look at this. <sighs> so, but, uh, amusing. Anyway, but anyway, Dimitri, look at this, somebody's bottom. Ah! <laughs> Uh, I think it's where they've found out who he is. Um, is it? Yes. 
I think they found out who he, they found is uh, he's Mitchell Gant. So it says Carl Bilyask. So they learn that he's a pilot, and um, you know maybe he's going to um, do a close inspection of the MiG thirty one. No, uh, but anyway, meanwhile. Back in the hangar, Semelovsky's got to, he's the one who's got to do the, the set, start the fire. I don't know how he starts it. Maybe he throws a hand grenade or something, I don't know, but something blows up soon. So off he goes. There we go. Good luck, my friend. So they, I think they all know they're going to die. This, this, it's not going to end well for them. So, right. So. Oh, and then we learn that the first secretary is on his way, you know, the premier of the Soviet Union, who I think is Chenyenko in this. I could be wrong. I meant to look that up as well. Um, USSR premier. I'll say 1981. Oh, no, it's not it. Uh, Tikhonov. Oh, who would it after him then? <laughs> um List leaders of the Soviet Union. I thought it was Chenyenko because it looks like. I'm sure in the book, Firefox Down, I could have sworn he said Chenyenko. I know Chenyenko were after Andropov because he actually looks a bit like the fellow that's playing the premier in this. Ooh, looks like Chenyenko. Um, I'm supposed to be Brezhnev in this. All oh, right. Um. Yeah, it's supposed to be Brezhnev. Don't, don't look much like Brezhnev, but uh, anyway, whatever. Whatever. I think while this film came out, I think Andropov became lead. But he's actually in This Is Andropov, played by Wolf Carl. Don't look much like him, but anyway. Uh, are you talking about Hotel Transylvania? Anyway. But then we learn he's on the way and he's, he's, he's be here in 10 minutes or whatever. It's not supposed to be here until nine, but anyway. Right, he's on the phone to Dimitri. There he is. He's a pilot, Mitchell Gantz, one of their aggressor pilots and all that, trained to combat Russian machines. Maybe he means to do a close inspection of the MiG-31, etc. He says, no. No, he's not here for that, Dimitri. And he says, I'm doing the phone. Look. Um, but then they realise he's going to steal the plane. So, right, so all, they're going to... Um, Arrest everybody now. He gives the order, arrest everybody. Uh, but then there's an explosion. Bang, there we go. I don't know what set it off. I don't know. Maybe just some household chemicals in the right uh, amounts. I don't know. But anyway. The start of the fire, look. There we go. And they're hoping it'll spread to the thingamabob, the prototype. Anyway. So all the alarms go off. Uh, there is bundling, whatever the hell she's called, away. Um... Uh, Oh, my. Um, Semelovsky gets shot. We see he's actually got a gun in his hand. Uh, they bring him out. Um, here we go. Oh, and they, shoot, they just shoot him. And then we see he did have a gun in his hand when he... Quite gruesome, actually. Probably why we're a double A certificate here. Uh, there we go. We see he's got a gun in his hand. Um, uh, I don't know how he got a gun. Maybe... I don't, you'd think it'd be harder. With something like the Soviet Union, you'd think it'd be really hard to get a gun, wouldn't you? But maybe it isn't. I don't know. <laughs> um... Right, so the call out, they say, you know, um, Dr. Um, um, I forgot his bloody name now. I'm going to say Barishnikov. That's not right, is it? What's his bloody name? <laughs> um, Bar Baranovich, that's it. What am I like? Uh, Baranovich, step forward, please. So he comes out. Um, and while he's looking at the door, he's saying, you know, he's hoping Mitchell Gannett's going to come walking through. Because uh, it's supposed to, as soon as he hears the alarm, the alarm's going off. Ding, ling, 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 ling. The fire's going and stuff. But anyway, but he's got a gun as well, look. So they were, but anyway, come forward. And he shoots the officer. Comes forward, bang, shoots him. So they shoot them. Ah, look, shoot her as well. But his squibs going off left, right, and centre. Um, uh, see, she's dead. There we go. She is princess. What are you meowing for? <laughs> I think the cat wants to go out. Bear with me. I'll be back in a more. Just look at that picture. I'll look, I'll look. Her dead eyes can stare at you for a minute. I won't leave that. It's too scary, isn't it? There we go. We'll see him. <laughs> oh, me bum. Ow. You want to go outside? Come on. Chucking it down. Chucking it down. 
Det är dom som är i natt. Det är det. Det går ju. Ja, det är det. You can eat now. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Cool. Let me get you. Let me get you. Let me get you. I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> oh dear. She hasn't gone out, it's raining, so she doesn't want to go out. So now she's complaining. Right. Uh, so there you go, he looks at her. Uh, then his last thing, as he's dying, he looks over and he sees Mitchell Gant come out. I presume it's Mitchell Gant come out, walking slowly across the, uh, calmly, I should say, across the hangar. So in he gets out. Uh, we're halfway through the film now, by the way. So we're halfway. Getting to the good bit now. Uh, gets in the plane, starts firing it up. An officer says, um, What are you doing, Colonel Koskov? Get out of the plane. And he shoves him away. And um, then he looks down. I've missed that bit. Where he shoves him away. Where is it? There he is. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, get off, you bugger. Then he opens his visor so we can see his face. And uh, Colonel Kontarski sees him. And then um, he sets off. He said, that tells him, close the doors. Close the blast doors. Close the blast doors. But no, he's setting off. So off he goes. Just like the Batmobile. Uh, off it goes. Uh, obviously, the, the doors don't stop it. So out it goes. So they start shooting at it. Uh, um, just as the premiere arrives, good old Brezhnev and all his mates. I could have sworn it was Chenyenko in the book. Maybe it is, I don't know, but anyway. Uh, three and a half. Let me let's see his first um, um, visual effects shot. Vis the, the visual effects, by the way, were done by John Dykstra and his Apogee company. Uh, using a process called reverse blue screen, which I'd never heard of until I read it here on Wikipedia. Um, if you remember, uh, for like, films like The Empire Strikes Back, um, for, for films like Star Wars, the original Star Wars and that, and space things where you, you know, you're, you're filming your spaceships flying in space, it's done with traditional like blue screens and stuff, and then you have a, a mat and all that. And um, in, in black, in the blackness of space, it's fine. You don't have to worry much about a black border being around, being around, behave, being around your, your spaceships. But um, in um, if you're shooting, if you're having spaceships or whatever flying through brightly lit scenes, it can be a problem. You can have a black mat line around them. And apparently, this is supposed to do away with that. The reverse blue screen. What they did, they painted the. Uh, actually, I'll, I will describe it. I've got it uh, highlighted somewhere. How does it do it now? Uh, where have I put it? Uh, there you go. A new special effects technique for the shooting of the flying sequences called reverse blue screen photography was developed by John Dykstra for this movie. Wikipedia.com states that the process involved coating the model with phosphorus paint uh, and photographing it uh, first with strong lighting against a black background and then with ultraviolet light to create the necessary male and female mats to separate the foreground model and the background footage. This enabled the shiny black model to be photographed flying against a clear blue sky and gleaming white snow. Compare this with traditional blue screen technique used in uh, Empire Strikes Back, for instance. But they did have problems with the, the mat and they used the... the Alleviated that a bit by making them semi-transparent, didn't they? So you could see through them sometimes. But uh, anyway, yes, yeah, a factoid. <laughs> um, uh, never go full Mando face reveal. <laughs> yes, he did, didn't he? Don't know why he did. Anyway, there we go. Off it goes. It's going to take off now. And um, there's some good, good shots. I think they had... Um, I don't know. I, I can't remember. But uh, anyway... So I think no, no, they didn't. I'm, I'm 
I think did they? Though? I'm, I'm sure they had the, a remote control version of it. I mean, but it's something else. I've seen somewhere that a remote control version of the plane crashed somewhere. Oh, here we go. Um, remote control filming models crashed into heavy rush hour traffic, causing a significant traffic jam. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's for this plane or if it's for something else, you know, a helicopter or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't say. But uh, anyway, whatever. Right. So off he's go. He's setting off now. Anyway, so he's getting all this stuff ready, and off it goes. And some good shots of um, hang on, if I can find it, of it taking off. Um, not that I'm on about. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Oh, there we go. That one. I like shots like this. It's simple, isn't it? They've just got a mod, the model with the undercarriage closing up and obviously a rear projected runway. It's just nice because it reflects on the underside. It gives it a realistic look, in my opinion. There we go. A cool shot. But uh, anyway, so off it, here it comes. Uh, Warren Clark sees it fly. Sorry, Pavel. He's the plane fly over. Uh, so now he can shoot himself in the head. He's happy. <laughs> Because they're catching up to him. So he gets his gun out, as we can see. There we go. Gets his gun out. We don't see him do it. We presume he shot himself because then it cuts to... When we're supposed to hear the... Pow, it just cuts to the... Pow, of the jet. So off it goes. Is it a scramjet engine? I have no idea. don't know. So here it goes. Still still get a bit of black lines around it, don't you? But, you know, it's fine. So off he goes. Uh, he's got to head south. Um, he's got to let. Um, uh, there's like a, a, a commercial airliner um, that he's got to let this commercial airliner see that he's heading in that direction. Uh, they'll report it, obviously. And then he's going to ch turn round and go head east, and then up up the Urals. But he's going to got to make them think he's heading south at first. Um, this is back at the uh, the Goodies HQ. It's where they learn that, uh, you know, radio chatter and stuff is saying that there's been a definite takeoff from Bill Yask. So they're saying, oh, he's done it. Hoorah. So I've got to alert Mother One. There you go. Um, which we learn later on is a submarine. But they don't know that yet. They're the bad guys. Um, right, so off he goes. Uh, this is the plane. He's um, got a buzz. There he is. They're all, oh, look, a, a fighter jet. Um, there he is. It does have some really good flying scenes, I must admit. Um, looks more like Blitzkrieg than Ramjet. I have no idea. I don't know. Is that a, a comic book reference? I have no idea. A cartoon reference? I don't know. <laughs> There you go, that's just established my route south. Now he's got to turn east and head up the Urals. Um, he's talking into his voice recorder thing. He's activating, he's, well, he's attaching his homing device. There it is. Um, so off he goes. Oh, there's getting contact now by the first secretary. Um, you know, says, bring it, bring back the plane and, you know, you, you won't be killed, etc. Uh, he says, I can't do that. You know, sorry. He says, well, then you will be destroyed. Blah. Anyway. Behave yourself. Oh, it's been a pain. Bear with me again. Bloody cat. She's gone out in the teams of rain. She'll be wet through and it'll all be my fault when she comes back in. <laughs> anyway, so they're threatening him, saying, you know, won't be allowed to uh, steal the plane. And they're saying, yeah, whatever. Right. So off he goes, heading east now. It's a cool flying shot, so must have been. Um, Mr. Z. Well, oh, is it a Transformers thing? All oh, right. I'm never into trans. I never watched the cartoon, the Transform, but I like the 1986 animated film, uh, which I've got somewhere. I've got the album, um, uh, but I don't like the Michael Bay films. Oh, bloody hate them things. <laughs> They're horrible. Anyway, 
Right, so off he goes, flying his plane. Right. Um, uh, that's uh, Wolf Karla as uh, Yuri Andropov, future ruler of the Soviet Union, briefly. Um, so they think he's heading south, so they say maybe you know, Turkey or Greece, uh, either get their maps up. Um, this fella who just, for some reason, he looks like Stephen Burkoff, but it's not. He's like Pound Shop Stephen Burkoff. I don't know the actor's name. What's he called? Um, I've no idea. I think he's General Vladimirov. I think he is. Klaus Lo Lovich. Never heard of him. <laughs> I think. Hey, where is it? Is it him? Yes, it is him. A uh, German actor. There we go. Um, pound shop, uh, Stephen Burkoff. Anyway, uh, so he's the one kind of in charge of finding the plane, you know, bringing him down, so to speak, so telling them what they're doing, St you know, um, scrambling aircraft, blah, blah, blah. They think he's heading south, possibly landing site in the deserts of Turkey or in Greece. Um, but, um, you know, so the Looking to the south. Right. So, so he's headed east now um, uh, through the Urals and he decides he's going to find out what this baby can do. So off he goes and it all speeds up. Like that. Pardon me. There he goes. Uh, some nice model work, by the way. Some nice uh, mountains and valleys and stuff that we see. Uh, this is long before CG, obviously. Let's just make sure we're still going, by the way. Uh, yes, we are. We're still going on Rumble. Yes, we are. We're still going on Rumble. And we're still going on Twitch. Yes, we are. Right. Um, Love the 80s comics and the cartoons. Movies have been generally acceptable, except that Rise of the Beast meth. Patooey. Didn't like any of them. Didn't like any of them. Uh... Although Megan Fox is nice to look at <laughs> in the first couple. But uh, I think I've only seen the first two, I think. I started watching one, the, is it Dark of the Moon? And they just when it showed them on the moon, it showed the Apollo landing, uh, lunar lander, Lem, on the moon's surface, still with its top part on. I thought, sod this, I'm turning it off. No, I haven't watched any of them since. <laughs> Got me angry. Uh, didn't care for the first Transformers, so I never watched the rest. No, I, I don't like any of them. The bloody garbage. Anyway, right, so he's off. He's testing out the plane through the Ural Mountains, flying super, super fast. Uh, unfortunately, because he's flying so fast, um, um, the listening posts, we learn that there's listening posts and stations and stuff. Um, all over the place, and they're picking him up. So he's been a bit of an idiot, really, so he shouldn't have done that. But Tim Rose thinks Bumblebee is a good movie. I've not seen that one, and I've heard it's good. Um, so there, anyway. Right. I've heard the latest one as well. It isn't too bad. Um, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> anyway. Right, so off he goes. So there we go. Causing ecological damage as, as he goes. Look, Poor animals, wondering what's going on. Look, he's destroying the forest behind him. <laughs> anyway, so he slows down a bit. Uh, and this is where General Vladimir, or whatever the hell he's called, um, is, is musing to himself that he would have made such an error. And so he now thinks he's not going south and um, he thinks he's, he's, he's probably going to go north. He won't go west because of the nobody, nobody would. Uh, there to uh, you know penetrate the Moscow defences, but um, which apparently aren't that good, are they? Because in 1986, that German kid landed his plane <laughs> in in Red Square. He didn't get shot down, did he? And he says he can't go east because he'd run out of fuel before he got to China or whatever. Um, so he said must be going north. Um, Oh, wow. it's where we learn that uh, the 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 other the the other Firefox plane is is uh, wasn't damaged as badly as the thought in the fire, and it can be ready in an hour um, uh, to go and in and and fly after uh, Mitchell Gant. 
Uh, and it can catch up to him because that can be refueled in midair, whereas Mitchell Gant can't. So that's uh, something else. Uh, they need one of those big refueling things in the sky, like they're having stealth. That's what they need, don't they? <laughs> uh, oh, I and we learned that Colonel Kozkov, Voskov, whatever this bloody called, uh, is okay and is is itching for payback. So he's going to go after him. Right, this is where we learned they've heard him through the Urals. We have him now, he says. So right, so. Now they know where he's going. It's, it's heading up, up through the Urals, using the Urals um, to mask himself from detection. Although they've detected him, but never mind. <laughs> uh, just need the power, just to power the plane with magnets. Yes, big honking magnets. <laughs> um, so that's what he's doing. So he thinks he's heading up to the to the Arctic. That's it. The Gulf of Orb, the Gulf of Kara. So he's alerting all those up there, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and he says they're going to use um, heat-seeking missiles to take him out, but they may need to use another plane, their own planes, as a, a target for the missiles. I don't know how that would work, but that's what they're going to do. So he says, you have to give that off. So he says, okay, right. So uh, he's getting close to his, uh, his refueling point now, so he activates his homing device thing thusly um, but then we see that uh, there's a, a plane coming um, I think he calls it a, I can't remember um, I can't remember what he calls it, you know. is it a, not a bear, a beaver I can't remember what they call it no. single aircraft, of the, uh, badger that's it I know it began with B <laughs> reconnaissance aircraft uh, then using that to, to, to lock on to him somehow. I don't know how, but uh, that's what they're, they're doing. And then some missiles are on the way now, homing in on his exhaust. Uh, but he's going to blow up the other plane to make it hotter than him. But they're using that anyway. I don't understand why the, <laughs> the, the logic behind this. But them using this other plane, I don't understand. But uh, so he's, he's going to... Um, Fire a missile at the Badger. Um, thinking in Russian, of course. But he doesn't think in Russian. He just speaks it in, in his helmet. He don't, he don't, they don't, like, have a, you know, a, a spooky voice in Russian going, he just speaks it. So we presume he's thinking in Russian as well. Uh, so that's what he does. There you go. That's him doing that. Beep, 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 beep. And off a, a missile goes. And it goes. And it takes out the other plane and the, the other missiles. Um, there we go. There we go. He blows that up and the other missiles head for that. But I think two of them are still... Are they? I might, might be later. Has he still got two coming after him or is that from another bit? No, that's from another bit later. Yes, I was thinking that. Badger, 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 badger. Bit of Brian May. <laughs> um... And they think he's being destroyed because they picked up the plane blowing up and all that, and they think he's being destroyed. Oh, Buchholz is being all glasses half empty, but uh, Teddy, uh, Teddy, Freddie Jones is um, saying, "Well, we don't know. Is he's half full?" And um, anyway, he looks like Doctor. Is it Doctor Michael Burke? You remember him from the science program in the seventies? Looks like him, doesn't it? <laughs> um. But uh, so he's saying, no, oh, they've blown him up, they've blown him up. But um, he's saying, no, you know, contact Mother One and all that stuff. Uh, anyway, flies over a, a, a spy, a trawler, spy trawler. There it goes. And they've picked him up. Uh, we used to have a lot of spy trawlers off our coast. I remember when I was a kid, we used to go to um, the Yorkshire coast. Places like Scarborough and Bridlington and places like that. You often saw uh, Russian trawlers over on the horizon. <laughs> um, this we were told, you know, just to say, oh, they're Russian trawlers spying on us. Anyway. Right, so that's, that's a nice shot, isn't it? That's a nice shot. This is nice detail on the plane there. Cool. Cool. 
it's kind of re slightly reminiscent. I don't know if it is or not, but I'm getting um, I forgot what they call it now. <laughs> the other Euro fighter. I'm going to look that up now. What what is called? Um, is it a typhoon? Is that a typhoon? Is that what I'm thinking of? No, not the weather system. <laughs> um, I know it doesn't look much like it. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's these these wings at the front, these little fins or whatever. The typhoon's got them, but it don't, apart from that, it doesn't look much like. It. I don't know a little bit, maybe a little bit. If you squint and. No, nothing like it, never mind. In that it has wings. Anyway, there we go. So it's flying along. There we go. Cool shots, cool shots. You see where most of the money went. I mean, the the, the budget for the film was 21 million and somebody once said that the, the special effects budget was 20 million. <laughs> Which it, maybe it was, I don't know. Um, right, so... He, he doesn't think he's, you know, the, the other fella, the general secretary, first secretary, whatever, saying, you know, we've got him, but he doesn't think he's dead. Um, so he thinks he's still uh, still uh, heading somewhere up to the, uh, the pack ice, you know, the, the permanent ice where they can land. So he thinks there'll be probably... He don't think there's a ship waiting for him. He says he can't land on an aircraft carrier, and obviously he can't refuel in the air. Maybe, I don't... Does that one not refuel in the air? I don't know, but he say he can't refuel in the air, so he's got to land somewhere, uh, and they're going to be looking for like an outpost or something like that, um, or maybe an icebreaker ship. I don't know. For some reason they don't think of a submarine coming up, but that's what happens. Anyway, right. So it's going to pass close to a, a missile cruiser called the Riga. So that'll take some pot shots at him. Um, oh, and he's not got much fuel left. And he's not got much fuel left, so he goes a bit lower. Um, but then he starts going faster for some reason. I thought it was low on fuel, but I uh, don't know how much I've got left. Not much, I suppose. What does he say next? Um, he thinks he's going to ditch in the sea. And then the, the Riga's coming up. There it is. Um, bit of uh, stock footage. I bet that's an American ship. I bet it is. <laughs> that's something from, um, I don't know, that hadn't been made yet, had it? When this this came out. I was going to say from Hunt for Red October, but that hadn't been made yet, had it? But maybe that used the same stock footage. I don't know. Um, anyway, the plane, they flies over it. Uh, so can't take evasive action. Too low on fuel. So it goes fast. <laughs> Because it fires missiles at him. Yeah, let's see what this baby can do. If you're running low on fuel, you don't go faster, do you? Anyway. So he starts churning up the ocean behind him. Well, the homing device activates that now. So he's 140 miles out. Um, is he going to show it? Is he going to show it? We can see it there in the background. He's churning up the sea behind him. Is he going to show it? There we go. There he is. <laughs> cool. But they fired missiles at him. Look. Uh, oh no, he's firing missiles at that helicopter. There we go. Blows that up. But then they fire missiles at him, I think. Um there he goes. All right, takes out that other helicopter. I think they're gonna fire a missile at him, I think. I'm sure they do. There it is. I thought they did. Fire two missiles. And um he just outruns them, I think. I think it's this one. Um, oh, wow, there's four missiles. I think it takes two of them out. Uses the rearward defence pod or whatever they call it. And um, there we go. That takes two of them out. And um, he just outruns the other two. There we go. As they're just flying along, he just outruns them because he's that fast, even though he's running low on fuel. Never mind. And they just, they just run out of fuel and drop out of the sky. Would that happen? Yeah, why not? Why not? Right. Boy, is this a machine. Meanwhile, Colonel Voskov's ready to go and um, kick some American butt. So off he goes. Um, right. Um, so they're still, you know, they're, he's still, the general still doesn't think that they've got him and all that, but... Um, 
you know, he's, he's saying we need to send more helicopters and stuff out to search for the wreckage, blah, 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 or it search for them um, somewhere where he's going to land. So they've got to send search parties out. Anyway, so he's setting off. He's Colonel Voskov. He's got a long way to fly, but then he's going to refuel in the air. But Mitchell's got to land, hasn't he? So anyway, so that's what he's going to do now. So here he comes to where we're going to see um, what's happening. There we go. Here's the submarine. I think this is from um, Ice Station Zebra, I think. I think this footage is. Um, so up he comes. Up, up the... Uh, the uh, thingamabob comes, the submarine. I think this is from Ice Station Zebra. I don't know where they filmed this bit, by the way. I don't know if it's like a, a back lot or if it's actually somewhere. Um, Will Wheaton is he there? I didn't see him. <laughs> um, but anyway. All right, so he's going to come in and land. So there we go. His radar's on. He's going to come in and land on this. Uh, it turns out it's a big ice flow. He's not on the permanent pack. He's on like an ice floor, just short of the permanent ice pack. A big iceberg, essentially. Uh, so going to come down. Here he comes, and then you'll see the uh, the submarine in any minute now. Uh, there it is. There it is. So here he comes in for a landing. That's it. another cool use of the the. The landing gear model <laughs> filmed against the rear projection, uh, and he, he comes into land, and he says he can't use the brakes. I don't, I don't know anything about flying planes, but he says he can't use the brakes. Maybe he just skid. I don't know, but I presume he's using reverse thrust, and I don't know. So here he comes. Uh, that's a nice model. Uh, can't see any wires. I must admit, can't see any wires. No. Unless they've been removed digitally, I don't know. But uh, I'm sure on on my VHS, on the other versions I've seen, I'm sure I saw wires. Maybe they've removed them digitally. But anyway, you know, since the film came out. Anyway, so he lands the planes down, uh, but he can't use the brakes. You'd think he'd have like a parachute thing, wouldn't you, come out of the back, wouldn't you? But uh doesn't. Anyway, it stops just in time. There's it going to be, there we go. Can't use the brakes. It's going to be close. Uh, anyway, he just makes it, stops just at the, uh, there we go, just at the edge. There we go. Uh, and then he uh, he turns the plane like that. Can they do that, planes? I don't know. I don't know how planes work when they're on the ground. <laughs> Have they got power going to the wheels? I don't know. I thought... I, don't, I thought they had to have something pulling them. If they to move on the ground, I thought they had to have things moving them about. I didn't think you could turn it like a steering wheel and make the plane go that way on the ground. Um, no, like, like that's doing. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the MiG-31 is that good. I don't know. But anyway, it turns around, heads back to the submarine, and they start refueling it. Because obviously they've got universal refueling points that just fit, you know, the feet. <laughs> anyway. Right. So that he's being refueled now. Meanwhile, Voskov's still heading that way. Um, uh, they're talking about the sub are these their submarines or American submarines. I don't know, but um, um he thinks is uh, oh, he's saying um, the the first secretary saying you know there's no no one waiting for him is ditched in the sea or whatever. Uh, anyway. So he's being refueled uh, and he's waiting. Uh, and this captain's really good. What's his name? What's his name? Captain. Nah, 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 nah. Does it say? Can't find it. Don't know. Don't know the captain's name. Never mind. But he's a really good character. Um, he's like a crusty old uh, submarine captain. And he gets on, seems to get on really well with the. Uh, Mitchell Gant, they have some nice banter. And uh, anyways, we learn that they've got some helicopters heading straight for them. So, so they said, "Can you melt me a runway or whatever?" So yeah, whatever. Uh, right. So this is where he's saying 
they're going to refuel. It's landed on a, a big ice floe. That's what he thinks. And, um, um, and the Riga, the 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 cruiser that we saw earlier, has picked up the the submarine essentially. Uh, says it's, it's too heavy a contact to be ice, so they've picked up the submarine. So they know he's in that direction. That's what they suspect. Um, and uh, they're going to send out the Riga's helicopters in that direction. So. But uh, oh, here's the, the second Firefox being refueled in the air. And he's heading uh, for the uh, uh, for the right area. So anyway, so anyway, here come the uh, here come the helicopters. So we're on a countdown now. They're getting closer. Um, so he, anyway, he gets cross the general, whatever his bloody name is, and. Uh, he says, your stupidity is losing this aircraft to the Americans. So he says, right, so what we're going to do? He says, you know, go to this contact that the Riga picked up. Right. Send the other Firefox that way. Um, so they know these other helicopters are coming, so he says, that's Operation Harmless, so they've got to look like a scientific, you know, station. Um, to... That's what they're there for, because they're in international waters, so there's nothing they can do. They're not in Russian waters or anything like that. So this is where they asked for them to do a, uh, a melter runway. So anyway, so that's what they start doing. And the, the comms chap in the submarine saying, these Russians are trying to contact us. They want to speak to you. Uh, it says, well, stall them. So telling him that he's uh, doing a scientific experiment on the other side of the ice floor. There you go. Uh, so they're melting him a runway. He's getting back in the plane. He says, uh, there's, there's only a minute out. What, they see him? <laughs> the helicopter, there's only a minute out. What, they see him take off? I don't know. These Russians are making me thirsty. <laughs> For vodka. Um, right, so off he goes. He says, right, he says, thanks, Captain. He says, get out of here, you bum. I just said it, I missed it. There you go. Get out of here, you bum. <laughs> I don't know why it just makes me laugh. Right, so off he goes. He's setting off now. He's taking off. And remember, the helicopter's are only a minute away. You'd be able to see him, wouldn't you? You'd be able to see him. But they can't see him for some reason. But uh, you can't see this amazing aeroplane taking off from this ice floor. Anyway, he's in the air again. There he goes. Uh, we're friendly, wave. Oh, wow, this, this fella's voice. Oh, let's go back. This fella's voice is amazing. <laughs> says, wave. He goes, wave. Hey, listen, I'm gonna, are, we, are we muted? Yes, we are. Here we go. Wave. Wave. <laughs> wave. So they're waving. Because they're harmless, doing scientific, harmless scientific experiments in international waters. But never mind, they're, they're probably just, they can see probably the big runway melted in the ice and the marks left by this Max 6 aircraft that's just taken off. But never mind. Uh, oh, another cool cool shot. As we see, Mitchell thinks thinks he's home and dry. He's refueled. He's just heading for wherever he's heading for. Um, heading for home. But, here we go, as we see in uh, the first Firefox, we get another one here, dun, 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 when it's ready, dun, 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 <laughs> come sliding in, because he's a baddie, and uh, fires missiles at him. So he has to go into a, there we go. He's got to avoid the missiles now because he's super ace at flying. Uh, missiles, are, you know, the missiles don't hit him, uh, as we see. Uh, that, that. Uh, so he's avoided those. He says, where did they come from? Because obviously he can't pick up the, because it's, you know, stealthy. But then, uh, he's, he, luckily he's got a camera, a rear-facing camera, so he can see it. Must be close. You can see it like that. Objects in the rear view camera are closer than they appear. Probably. I don't know. But anyway. So there we go. So dogfight time now. So they're going to fire missiles and shoot the machine guns. But they make them look like lasers in this. So that's why I like it. 
So some nice, um, let's have some nice fighty scenes. There we go. There's actually a shot coming up later on that reminds me of um, Star Trek, the motion picture, but we'll get to that. Um, so, so a bit nice tussling backwards and forwards. Um, Mitchell gets behind him. I think I think this might be Mitchell getting behind him. Um, tries to take him out, and you know it doesn't work. They're, they're as good as each other, so to speak. But um, that's a more flying about. Look, wee! Oh, just like Cylon Raiders, then want the do 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 do. But um, there you go. Now he's got his machine guns. Ho ho ho! Uh, but then it looked like lasers. <laughs> I remember seeing that in the trailers on TV when it went on telly when it first came out. I thought, I'm going to go see this at the pictures because they showed that bit. Because <laughs> uh, it was, I thought, he's got lasers. Was it in his, obviously, tracers or whatever. Uh, that looked like a Cylon. That's like a Cylon Raider there, doesn't it? I know it is, but never mind. So there we go. They're flying about. Is it good? This way is going to take it into the uh, into a canyon now. Is it? Is it this bit? No, not yet. Um, yes, it is this bit. It goes into flies into a canyon. Um, long before Will Smith tried it in Independence Day, Clint Eastwood got there first, flying into an icy canyon. And um, he doesn't bother with hope oh, you got an airbag, he just flies out. Yes, by your command, speak, Centurion. We've done Battlestar Galactica, haven't we? So. <laughs> Anyway, so there he goes, flying through there. And then he gets to the end of the canyon. It just ends, and luckily he's got um, cool reflexes, or great reflexes, and uh, pulls up just in time. Oh. And gets out just in time. So they carry on tussling, flying about, shooting at each other, firing missiles, all that jazz, like that. Um, and this is now where I think it goes into a, like a flat spin. Uh, that's just tracer rounds. It isn't. It's lasers. <laughs> it was in my mind as a whatever I, was, I can't remember. What did I say? Well, fourteen year old or whatever I was when I saw the trail. Fifteen, I can't remember. They were lasers to me. Anyway, so he's avoiding these uh, other missiles. It's put him in a, like a spin. So he's, uh, say he's spinning out of control. Let me show it from outside. Uh, and he starts having one of his attacks um, as this happens. Uh, there he's spinning up. Show us it from the outside, damn it. There he goes. Oh, I got to him. They missed it then. So down he goes. Hey, he's out of control. Look at the other part. It's not shooting at me. Have you noticed? He's thinking, oh, we'll just see what happens here. We'll see how this uh, transpires. He's watching. It's actually giving him a chance. Because remember, he essentially. He, he owes Mitchell Gant one, doesn't he? Because uh, Mitchell Gant was supposed to kill him. So they kind of owes him one. Uh, anyway. So down he goes, flying, uh, spinning down. And uh, Mitchell, is, I say, he's having one of his episodes. We think he's, you know, he's, because he's going to start seeing Napalm Girl. Uh, there it is, look. Start seeing her. But then he reaches over and hits the uh, undercarriage thing. I don't know why this works. I have to say, I can't fly a plane, so I don't know why. But it's the undercarriage. The undercarriage comes down. Does that trigger something automatic in the plane? And the plane thinks it's going to start landing or something. I don't know. And it gets out of the... I don't know, but it, it works. <laughs> there we go. The undercarriage comes down, and there it is. It's just so they could use that model again, isn't it? And, and it's fine now, is the plane. I don't know why that worked. It just did. And the plane's now fine. And uh, Captain uh, Colonel Fosco flies alongside him. Oh, well, this is the bit that reminds me of uh, um, Star Trek, the motion picture, when we see the Klingon battle cruisers at the beginning. It's just basically that, isn't it? <laughs> hey. But in the, I think in the 4.3 version, the VHS version, they were more centred. I think they used a pan and scan and made them more centred. Anyway, uh, so he just salutes him. And then the back to the action, back to killing each other. There you go. Very good, my friend. 
anyway, right. <laughs> so, right, back to shooting at him. Uh, with his lasers. <laughs> anyway, so shooting him again. So he's now thinking, he can't, he's, he's forgotten to think in Russian for some reason. He's going, fire rear wood missile. Um, I didn't even know it had a rear wood missile. We learned it had a rear wood defense pod, you know, with explosives, but. Um, but uh, oh, he puts the undercarriage back up and uh, the carry on again. And he says, Time to say fire rear wood missile, but he's uh, there we go. Come on, damn it. But then he hears Beranovich's voice, You must think in Russian. A bit like Obi Wan with Luke. <laughs> you must think in Russian. And there we go. Um, there you go. You must think in Russian, Russian, Russian. So he thinks in Russian. Krasnyazny Bednet. And uh, and so it's a bit anticlimactic, to be honest. Uh, off it goes. There we go. It fires the rearward explosives. And for some reason, Colonel Voskov, who can avoid missiles and stuff like that, can't avoid, uh, you know, some explosives heading for him. Um it just eats him. Uh, there we go. Ah, he was like, ah, ah, blown up. Uh, so it was rubbish in the end, wasn't it? A bit anticlimactic. So there we go. So he's now safe to go. And uh, we see some not great, <laughs> not greatly uh, composited explosion, but it's fine. So, right. So he's like, heading for home now. So off he goes. There you go, flying through the clouds, into the sunset, uh, literally. Uh, have we seen that in something else? That looks... I know I've seen it in this film, but I'm sure I've seen that in something else as well. Like that 3D that, like, horizon thing. It looks familiar. Right, go on. Coming home, he says. And there, oh, there it, oh, for God's sake. Where are you? Heading... There we go. Into the sun, flying off into the sunset. Or away from the sunset. Or whatever. Um, it should be heading into the sunset. It's flying into the west, isn't it? Rises in the east, sets in the west. Yes, it should be flying into the sunset. Well, unless that's sunrise. But it can't because it won't fly in at night, will it? Uh, anyway. There we go. So he's off. He's heading home. And that's the end of the film. Produced and directed by Clint Eastwood. Um, if you read the book, Firefox Down, uh, which was apparently there were, there were plans to make to do that as a sequel. Um, he actually crashes the plane. <laughs> uh, something happens. He get he was damaged in the dogfight with Voskov, and uh, he's losing fuel. And uh, he's to ditch the plane in a, a lake in Finland, I think. And um, uh, so you don't see much of the plane in Firefox Down because he's to ditch it in a lake, and I think it sinks. He gets out, and then it's about him. Um, I don't know, it might be in Russia. It might still be in Russia, and he's to get to the Finnish border. Uh, and safety, um, something like that. Um, and, but I think they still, I think they do recover the plane at the end. But uh, anyway, it was never made. But the book came out, and I've, I've got it. It's, it's not a bad book. But that's the end of this film. Uh, we could just assume he made it fine. So there we go. And it's a great film. I really like Firefox. Like I say, I went to see it at the cinema when I was a kid. It's a lot of fun. Uh, some people say it's a bit slow. And it is at the beginning, like I said, the first half of the film with all the espionage and all that stuff, it is a bit uh, a bit plodding. But um, once it gets going, once it's in the air, you know, it, it kicks into high gear. Let me go watch me. Watch some special effects again. <laughs> um, it is a lot of fun. I really like it. So there we go. So give it a whirl, especially the Blu-ray. Well, this one at least, anyway. Uh, two movie collection with um, Heartbreak Ridge. It's the extended version on that. So give that one a whirl. Got it off Amazon. It wasn't expensive. Um, I can't remember how much, but it wasn't. Right, right. So there we go. Hang on, let me get rid of that. I'll make myself big again. There we go. So that's Firefox, uh, a good film. That's it. It is a bit plodding at the uh, at the start for the first half of the film, but if you can get through that, everybody's waiting for the plane, aren't they? Um, you know, it's uh, a lot of fun after that. 
uh, would have sucked to read a book about a jet fighter where they don't use said jet fighter. That's why it's called Firefox Down. <laughs> um, but uh, it's not a bad book. It's not a bad book, is the sequel. But uh, anyway, so there we go. It'd been, uh, you know, nice if they'd done that film, but they didn't, so never mind. I don't think they will now. It's a bit long, a bit late now, isn't it? Anyway, right, so we'll leave it there. What's that? Oh, it's not. I forgot to close that. Right, so what's coming up next? What we got coming up next? Uh, what day on Monday? Wednesday, I'll be live news stream. If there's any news, I don't know. Um, Friday night, appointment with fear. Oh, um, oh it's, uh, it's alien in it this week. They're over there. I keep forgetting to get them out. Hang on, well, I'm bear with me. There we go, watching Alien, the first one on Friday. Looking at the reflection. Good old Blu-ray set. So the director's cut, I suppose. So that's on Friday. I've nowhere to put this now. <laughs> uh, and then next Monday. Uh, move that way. Uh, next Monday, we're doing um, Forbidden Planet. There we go. HD DVD, <laughs> nothing to play it on. Um, so that's coming up next Monday, uh, and there'll be sketch time, and I don't know, something other things, maybe. I don't know. We will see, right? So we'll leave it there. We're all done and dusted. Hang on, if they make it today, it needs to have Clint at his current age, <laughs> yes. Should have it so that the plane's been under the ice. He ditched it. They should show a de aged Clint at the beginning losing the plane, getting to safety. Let's have a quick montage of him getting to safety. They find him, but not the plane, and they can't retrieve it. But then it cuts to like present day, and he's got to go in, and he's the only one that knows exactly where it is or something. I don't bloody know. <laughs> hey, Friday is going to be lit. <laughs> It's good film is Alien. I really like it. I really like Alien. I like all of the Alien films. But uh, uh, and I'll probably get round to doing the others as well. But you know, in time, in time. Uh, have a great evening, everyone. Great review as usual, Steve. Thanks, uh, thanks, Josh. Um, I disagree. I'm rubbish at reviewing films. <laughs> Anyway, we'll leave it there. So, thanks, Josh. Council of Joshes, all of you, for coming in and saying hello. And Scottish Geek Guy as well. And uh, Tim Rose. And uh, I forgot to ask for donations, didn't I? Whatever. It'd be right. Um, I'm thinking of starting up a members section. I don't. I might leave it. I might leave it till we get to, like, more members. I don't know. I don't know. So, I think I could put some of my Patreon stuff in the members section. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I haven't made up my mind. Anyway, right, so we'll leave it there. So thanks, everybody, for keeping me company while I waffle about a film from 1982. Um, <laughs> I wonder what the film that were on with it. I think there was a film on with it. Because they used to do two films when I was a kid. Uh, you used to get two films for the price of one. And I can't remember what, what it was. I remember once I went to see The Big Brawl with Jackie Chan. <laughs> and the film that we're on with that were called Steel, starring um, Lee Majors. And that was amazing. That was better than the bloody Jackie Chan film. Sorry, Jackie Chan fans, but it was. But uh, anyway. Uh, ask for donations while you can, before your watch hours drop below 4,000. They haven't dropped below 4,000. They haven't reached 4,000 yet. <laughs> Uh, not that I know anything about that. For the drop below 3,000, which they might do. <laughs> they might do. Uh, right, so we'll leave it there. So, thanks for watching. Sorry, I was just checking the chat to make sure. Uh, check the other chats, by the way, make sure nobody said anything. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. No Archmage Frey this week. I wonder what he's up to. Maybe he disappeared in the eclipse. Who knows? <laughs> right. We'll leave it there. So, thanks for watching. Wherever you are, look after each other. And until next time, 
LCD. 